Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about the BOBA techniques and the neurodevelopmental techniques. Let's begin. Uh, to the learning objective. At the end of a lecture, the students should not be able to discuss the theoretical basis of the neurodevelopmental approaches, discuss the concept and principle underlying the Bobath approach, discuss the concept and principle underlying the Brunstrom approach. These all are the neurodevelopmental approaches. So let's have a look at the sensorimeter approaches. It will contain Bobath approach, Brunstrom movement therapy, Roots approach, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. We'll have a look and briefly discuss about the Bobath approach. The theoretical basis of neurodevelopmental model, reflex theory, hierarchical theory, systems approach. NDT model, the neurodevelopmental model consist of motor control and its production refers to two systems of the output. The open loop, voluntary control and the closed loop, which is postural control mechanisms. Open loop system commands sequences of movement that are centrally stored in the nervous system and that serve the function of mobility and the production of isolated joint and limb motion. Closed loop system, dependent upon apparent feedback for the elicitation of automatic movements that serve as the principal motility or stability of the organism. Requisite for the development of normal movement behaviors. Arise from pattern of coordination. This is the reflex theory. The basic unit of motor control are reflexes. Reflexes are the purposeful movement. Any damage to the CNS result to the re-emergence of an inability to control the reflexes. Moving on to the hierarchical theory, motor control is a hierarchical range. In this, CNS structures involved with movement can be grouped into higher, middle, and lower levels. Higher centers regulate and control the middle and lower centers. Any damage to the CNS result to the disruption of the normal coordinated function of these levels. The system's approach suggests that the CNS does not operate in a strictly descending manner, no higher level with which to control the opera operation of the lower levels. There is a mutable relationship between the various levels so that each level will alternate between command and subordinate rules in relation to other levels. The Bobath approach, its concepts and the principles. History, developed by Dr. Carol Bobath, a neuropsychiatrist, and Ms. Mrs. Berta Bobath, a physical therapist. In 1943, while working with the children with cerebral palsy, they found out this technique, Bobath approach. Original theoretical framework based on the work of Jackson, Sherrington, and Magnus, who described nervous system as a hierarchical in nature. The model given by higher brain center exerted control over lower level centers. Example, the cerebral cortex control supersedes that of the brain stem. Moving on to the old theory and the new theory. Old theory consists of a hierarchical brain organization, static posture and positions used for the treatment, progressing the client through normal development milestone. Development of control, control proceeds in a cephalocaudal direction. Work on component of motion with the child will then apply to function. The new theory is system-based model. Client is an active participant in the session. Developmental milestones serve as a guideline but should not be strictly adhered to. Control of the movement develops in proximal to distal and or distal to proximal direction. Client must work on the functional task to learn the skill. The old theory gives about CNS viewed as the controller, automatic postural control, mechanism simplified the responsibility of the CNS and control of the movement. As well, 
as here the new theory says the cns determines the pattern of neural activity based on input from multiple intrinsic system and extrinsic variables that establish the context for movement initiation and execution old theory says that the positive signs including spasticity and no abnormal coordination of movement are the most important aspect of sensory meter impairment as here the new theory says that the negative signs including weakness impaired posture control and paucity of movement are recognized as equally important as a positive sign a limitation of function limitations of function in the old theory it said that muscle and postural tone determine the quantity of the pattern of posture and movement used in the functional activities as a the new theory says the task goals experience individual learning strategies movement synergies energy and interest all affect the quality of the final action moving on to the basic idea of the bobat approach the abnormal pattern must be stopped not be by modifying the sensory input but by giving back to the patient the lost or the undeveloped control over his output in developmental sequence the basic pattern of posture and movement the writing reaction and equilibrium responses are elicited by providing the appropriate stimuli while the abnormal patterns are inhibited in this way patient is given the opportunity to experience normal movement the sensory information of correct movement is absolutely necessary for the development of improved motor control treatment therefore concentrate on handling the patient in such a way as to inhibit abnormal distribution of tone and abnormal postures while stimulating or encouraging the le next level of motor control in a condition of adult hemiplegia treatment approach was later on expanded to include the rehabilitation of adults with motor problems particularly the cva stroke the main problems the abnormal coordination of movement patterns combined with abnormal postural tones the secondary problems are the muscle strength and the muscle activity The Bobat concept is a living concept. It has undergone changes in its theoretical base to accommodate developments in the fields of neurophysiology, biomechanics, and the typical development. Holistic approach. It involves the whole patient, his sensory, perceptual, and adaptive behavior, and the motor problem. Moving on to the traditional view, the principle of treatment are the basic principle is to normalize the muscle tone. to facilitate the movement inhibit primitive reflexes facilitate normal posture reactions to so treatment should be developmental the techniques are handling weight bearing over the affected limb utilize position that allow use of the affected limb is in hierarchical theory the system theory is a reconstruction of the entity approach problems in the adult patient with stroke are the abnormal tone loss of postural control abnormal coordination abnormal functional performances goals decrease the influence of spasticity and abnormal coordination improve control of the involved trunk arm and leg retain normal functional pattern of the movement in adult stroke patient the principle of treatment treatment should be avoid movements and activities that increases the muscle tone or produce abnormal reflex patterns in the involved site treatment should be directed toward the development of normal patterns of the posture and movement the hemiplegic site should be incorporated into all treatment activities to reestablish symmetry and increase functional use treatment should be produce a change in the quality of movement and functional performances of the involved site the increase activity use of the involved site 
provide practice to the upper improve motor performances that lead to the motor learning this is all about the bobat and brunstrom approaches now we'll have a look on the stages of hemiplegia and the bobat approach initial flaccid stage the treatment focus on positioning and movement in bed to avoid the typical postural pattern of hemiplegia stage of spasticity the treatment is continuation of the previous stage with the goal of breaking down the total patterns by developing control of the intermediate joints stage of relative recovery the treatment aims to improving the quality of gait and the use of affected hand principle of treatment children with cerebral palsy treat the child as a whole basis for the intervention is normal movement and their interrelationships treatment is in cooperative facilitation and inhibition using key points of the control abnormal tone is always elicited normal responses once elicited are always repeated the key points of kpc part of the body where the therapist can most effectively control and change the pattern of the posture and movement in other body parts suppose proximal shoulders scapula pelvis hip distal jaw wrist ankle head may be a proximal or distal hip the key point is the central key point anteriorly the xiphoid process posteriorly the t7 and 8 and the posterior key point proximal key points are head shoulder pelvis the distal key point as we have seen it's a wrist jaw and ankle facilitation or the inhibition facilitation is a mean by which movement is made easy made possible and made necessary inhibition is involves decreasing the use of pathological movement and the effect of tone dysfunctions on the movement facilitation and inhibition may be used simultaneously and may be applied throughout the session what is handling manner of controlling the patient through tone influencing pattern what are the tone influencing the pattern normal pattern of activity used to modify abnormal pattern of our posture and movement total tone influencing patterns whole body is controlled in a reversal of the abnormal pattern the partial tone influencing patterns are some body parts remain free to move the tone influencing pattern are utilized by other key point control positioning as you can see the techniques of treatment in initial flaccid stage last for few days to seven week or maybe longer problems confused and disoriented divided into two half no balance or arm support on affected side fear of fall abnormal attitude on affected side no midline orientation the treatment is self orientation on affected side carry weights on the affected side bilateral functioning is interplay it explains the effect of affected side the passive movement proprioceptive treatment nursing preparations are positioning and handling to avoid spasticity contracture shoulder pain retraction of affected side and rejection the cooperation bed nurse and therapy turning patient bed pains uses weight bearing exercises strong balance in sitting and the mobilization of shoulder girdle other references this is all about the bobat approaches thank you